So, in fact, we have opened the plasma of electron. We go to its center, to its creator of all where all the energy is released from. We call it the principal matter because that is where everything starts from. It's the principal energy source and principal magnetic field source. Um, the scientific world would like to call it antimatter. And there are very funny things that's been said. They said if the matter and antimatter hit each other, there'll be nothing left, some magnetic fields. But in reality, it's like saying if Earth hits the sun, there'll be nothing left of the sun because Earth is a very small piece in the whole of solar system and the sun is the center. So in reality, what they say, uh, matter and antimatter, uh, is, is nonsense because, in fact, we call it the principal matter as this very strong magnetic field center unwinds like a ritual, like a, a clock of springs. If you remember when you were young, you play with it, you wind it, as it opens up and releases it in its magnetic field. Over billions of years, this entity exists in the universe. So, as it becomes weaker, it becomes matter at this lower end of its strength. At the highest strength, because it's so high, we don't see it, but we know of its existence because it guarantees the existence of the proton and the electron or the atom for billions of years. So what we do, we open the plasma, we go to the source, and when we're finished we're using its magnetic fields, we don't burn it, we put it back together again. So when we go to the center of the plasma, we open the plasma, we use its magnetic field, and we use it for positioning, then we get where we want or we achieve what we want then we then put it back together we don't burn it in fact it's very simple to understand if you will remember from your child time in the school they always told you two magnets if you put two magnets i try to show it to you here if it can be seen if you put north and north or south and south facing each other the other magnet moves away it's a very small movement but moves away you can do it at home and if you put north and south together, they're attracted. The interesting thing is, if you put south and south together, the other magnet moves away. You've seen it. There is no engine, there is no rocket in any of these two matters. It's positioning. They position each other in respect to each other. So what happens? Without any rocket propulsion, the other magnet moves to find its position comfortable in respect to each other. This is what we call magnetic positioning. And when you bring this into a plasma condition with a spherical shape, because in the universe, as I said, we don't see um, cylindrical matters, we don't see hexagonal matters. Everything is spherical. This is a spherical magnet. This is how the universe is. It has to close itself. So, in a way, I can show you very simply how the matters are in the universe. It's very simple. This is a four magnetic rings, one in the center and four around it. If one of these moves in any direction, the other one moves with it, without actually doing anything, because they have to find each other's position. They have to find where they are comfortable to be in respect to each other. When one moves, the other matter has to position itself to it. This happens exactly if you bring this knowledge back into medical application, which we talked earlier, you can say the center, it could be nitrogen, and the other three are oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. And in fact, if any of their position changes, that's how you change and you could be great or become ill in one respect or another. So we brought the knowledge back into it. We understand the structure of it. As we said, we understood how we could absorb carbon as in Gans of a matter, and we understood very simply that how to use this knowledge, for example, to repair the neural system from diseases like MS. In the world of medicine, they say when the myelin gets damaged or is gone or is eroded, uh, the patient gets MS. But in fact, we have proven that. MS only happens when the carbon within the amino acid changes its characteristics from a conductor to a resistor. So what was a insulation, it becomes a conductor. And this is actually one of the properties of carbon. Carbon is used in 
everyday life in the motors and generators as one of the best conductors as a brush. At the same time, diamond, which is again carbon in a different structure, lattice structure, is one of the best resistors known to man. So it's very simple. As a nuclear physicist, developing technology, understanding the gravitational positioning, understanding how CO2 can be made, or matter can be made in a, a solid state, in gases in the universe. So we tried it, we brought the knowledge, we instructed it through systems which we built, and we find people with MS who lost their feelings after five years, they start feeling their body again, they can feel their toes again, they can start moving and walking again, and this is part of the same progress. So in reality, um, even as it was discussed, uh, vitamins are some sort of magnetic fields. Uh, all the minerals are some sort of magnetic fields which they can hold on to so they become uh, what they are and our bodies has got used to use certain amount of it or certain of them for certain operations within the body. So, well, um, so you say that we don't need those vitamins anymore, actually. We just need the, the, the right vibration or like... That. No, we need the... It's not... It's not that we don't need vitamins. The point is that we, have, we are learning and we are in a very... Um, fast way we are learning that we can replicate them as a plasma without actually them being as a solid matter for us to eat. It's the same thing as we've done very recently that we understanding the position, gravitational position, magnetic field positioning and being able to replicate it. Now we can make magnets out of anything. You can have a magnet, wood magnet that attracts only wood you can make magnets which only attracts, attracts plastic and we've done the plastic uh, magnetic or uh, magnetizing as you call it in past two years it's very easy because now you create the right combination of what plastic is made you create the right exact copy of the magnetic field and gravitational field of the molecules of the plastic and that's it they get attracted to each other or they get repelled so it is very easy now to do as we offered the same to the Japanese with the Japanese nuclear disaster. We understand how this thing is done. We offered our technology to them. We offered it the following Sunday after the disaster that Keshe Foundation is prepared to give the system to them for retracting the radioactive material which is coming out of it back to the center of the reactor to be held there without polluting the environment. And uh, powers above had to give permission for such technology to be tested. So all of us are getting irradiated in a huge quantities. Even months after it, they have now made no difference in it, but still the same uh, radiation damage is coming out of the center and we can use the systems to do it. If you ask why, how is, why do you need such a thing, is that in a space is full of zones, full of radiation. And if we enter these radiations, we have two options. As the same as supplying food and medicine, we have to protect our aircrafts or crafts from these radiation zones. Or at certain points, we need to absorb certain radiations for production or for any other purposes. So we have developed now the technology that we can protect ourselves in deep space in high radiation zones. At the same time, we can use what we need in trips for what we need at a time of point of demand to absorb from the environment. It has a lot of applications. That one of the applications of this is poisoning. Now, if you have, let's say, rivers poisoned, you can create the gravitational field of the poison, and all you need, you can extract it from the water. So these are what is this technology to offer and what is got to come. And this is one of the reasons that we have announced from April of 2012, we are setting up what we call the Cash Inter International Space Institute. We have approached the um, heads of Leuven University for accommodation. If they can provide that, we can collaborate with the university 
to set up this institute. We will accept a hundred scientists from around the world to be trained and taught what we know that they can take it back to their own nations. So the process of teaching and learning and passing the knowledge on has already started. We shared our knowledge of space technology with Iran in 2008 and in 16th of March of 2011 they announced they have a spaceship program, first nation ever, because they have the knowledge, full knowledge has been transferred and the same will happen in the institute which hopefully the Belgian government officials will allow it to take place and will teach the same thing. The reason they call it the first nation which has got a spaceship program because it does not use propulsion anymore. Propulsion technology is finished. What the Americans use for sending a space, man to a space or the Russians, by burning fuel is what was brought in by the scientists from Germany from the Second World War to save their own lives. In reality, if you use the magnetic field and gravitational positioning, you don't need to burn anything, as I explained before. So, with the time of propulsion is over. The Americans know it, they've been, I've given lectures at George Hopkins University in 2010. Uh, to their scientists and it's very simple they are seeing it they understand what the changes is to, to come about in the reality with using gravitational magnetic field is that the funny things we see at the moment with the Americans or the Russians that they train astronauts for years before they go up they put them in a funny suit they put them up and they're all floating in a what you call weightlessness this is all a game in reality, if you look, a system like Earth, which creates its own magnetic field and gravitational field, it creates a specific condition that it keeps at 1G. So, we can walk and live a normal life without floating. The same thing happened with us. We created in a, in a, a synthetic way when we go on a jumbo jet, so we travel with the jetliners. We don't go and get trained six months before how to get on a plane to go to from one continent to another because in the jet plane they create a pressure condition that it grips to near 1g that will near, near enough but if you understand the structure of magnetic and gravitational fields how they are created you can create zones and you decide how depth uh, the zone will be 10 meters 100 meters a thousand meter that 1g stays exactly like earth you keep 1g so, with our systems, even we are offered tickets to sell to Moon for 2016, we say if you want to test the weightlessness, you have to pay extra because it costs money to create that condition. In our systems, you always say 1G. The other advantage with this technology is the Americans are planning to go to Mars. If you've seen the program, advanced program, is that they are planning how to make a capsule or use a capsule that they can literally walk in this, uh, what I call a a fuel tank for a few months because they can't unless when they go out of it they need to wear a special clothes to go on Mars or wherever they go they are conditioned to what they call the prison the capsule exactly what's happening in the space lab at the moment but if you can create a magnetic field and gravitational field exactly like Earth the way we do you can go in your Mini or your Mercedes or in a fuel tanker doesn't matter when you get to your destination, you increase your magnetic field 10 meter, 100 meter, exactly still at 1G. You can walk, you can walk on Moon, you can walk on Mars, you can walk on any planet, you can even walk in space at 1G. Because the magnetic field and gravitational field allows you to create that zone. When you finish, you reduce your field, you go to the next place. It's like a holiday camp, so you can open tents anywhere you like. This is the future of this technology. We don't talk, these are not fairy tales because we have systems now. And very soon, as I showed you the CO2, as I showed you the, what do you call it, uh, the operation of the magnetic fields, we will show the first car which has no wheels and it positions itself on the same basis. You don't need to tank fuel anymore. You literally find your position, you don't have the wheels, you'll fly at any height you like. But the advantage with this technology is that we have tested it, we can say it clearly that because you create magnetic fields like atmosphere around your system, the heating which was like with Concorde, Concorde used to expand by a few centimeters because of the heat when it was called supersonic. So if you put this system 
inside, let's say, a jumbo jet, you can increase the boundary of the magnetic field beyond the physical boundary of the plane, and then there will be no friction between the plane and the matter within the space or in the environment of the Earth. So you travel a friction-free environment, so you can go much faster. But if, for example, you put this system inside the same plane, as the dynamic magnetic field of the system are operating, your system becomes invisible to the present knowledge radar technology, which means as the magnetic fields of the radio waves approach the system, as it's a plasma, a dynamic plasma, it literally absorbs it in and chucks it up and literally becomes part of its structure. So the wave from the radar never goes back. So while you see the object flying, the radar says there is no object existing because it doesn't get the feedback or the return wave. So these objects, once or any object using this technology to the present radar frequency are invisible. So a lot of people will see them, they say there is such a thing in the sky and the uh, radar special says there is not because there is nothing on our radar but there are ways of detecting in systems. So, but at the same time, because these systems created dynamic, spherical magnetic fields, these magnetic fields interact with the magnetic field and gravitational fields of the Earth. So, the consequence of two fields interacting is creation of light. So, most of the time from now on, when you see these systems flying in the sky, due to interaction of their magrav, magnetic gravitational field and the gravitational magnetic field of the Earth, you will see what we call bright lights in the sky. So, 